All right, so now we move on to the review portion of the podcast where we start with our review for Ready or Not. This is a film that we were both looking forward to. It's a horror film directed by Matt Bellinelli Olpin, a third name person, and Tyler Gillette. Uh, this star, Samara Weaving, is a newlywed who becomes hunted by her spouse's family as part of their wedding night ritual. So it's been a little bit since I've seen this. And I can honestly say that my thoughts on the film uh, stayed pretty much the same since I left it, which is, I didn't love it. I didn't like this at all. Yeah, or at all. That's a little harsh. But my gut reaction was simply that it was another movie where you had a great concept and a weak execution. Oh, man, you hit the nail right on the goddamn head, which is, yeah, they... The concept is so good. It's so good that they had to steer all away from it. They got so scared of this concept, just staying with it. They wanted to flash it up with lore and complications and rules. And I'm like, dude, no. But a lot of the lore sucked and wasn't really explored. F- exactly. It didn't okay, make they're, sense. They're, okay, this movie had the problem where it would introduce a new concept or a new part of the story, but it wouldn't do anything with it. It wouldn't flesh it out. Right. And then at the same time, there was also a couple of things, and I'll get to this in spoilers, where they just lingered on certain parts of the story that weren't that exciting or you knew where they were going, but they just, it kind of felt like, we know where this is going, just get on with it, you know? Yeah, yeah. There are a lot of parts that, that add up to a whole here that, first of all, the whole isn't really that great, but then you, you start to look... Th- this is a movie that the further it goes on, you start to dissect everything you're seeing, and by the time it's over, you just start throwing out shit. You're like, this didn't need to happen. This right. character could have been gone. This whole element, this whole backstory thing, it just could, you could have tossed this shit out because it's just... This movie could have been streamlined a bunch because, again, this concept, a newly married woman must literally survive a night with her murderous in-laws in order to become a part of the family. That's a fucking dynamite concept, and you steered away from it, and you got too caught up in the how and the why, and you just made this movie, for me, and I know you liked it far less than I did, I thought it was okay, maybe like soft okay, like it was, it was okay. Yeah. Like, I don't regret watching it, but God damn it, this could have been great. It, well, see, I think that's part of it is my initial reaction, which was I was kind of bummed out by it. Here we had an original movie, you know, not based on anything, which we get so few of a year at this point, or at least that are worth watching. And this was just kind of another nail in the coffin of original spec scripts. Mm-hmm. So, I yeah, I agree with you where there was a lot of things that didn't need to happen. But here's another thing. Didn't you feel like a lot of the best flourishes of uh, comedy specifically were given away in the trailer? I feel like a lot of the best flourishes of everything were given away in the trailer, including the horror, including the violence, including, yes, the comedy. I think most of this movie is given away in the trailer. Um, This had a severe case of, oh, this scene. Okay, so that thing in the trailer, yep, it's going to happen next. It's like a sing-along. Yeah. You have, you see the ball bouncing across the screen, you know what I mean? You're like, yeah. and then they say this. <laughs> but like, oh man, and the, there were only, I, I'll sum it up as this. If you're in, if you're into the horror aspect of this, there are maybe two or three two scenes, or, two or three kills that don't happen, that you don't see in the trailer. And none of them are really that good. One of them is the ending in the movie, which we'll get to, which is bad. Yeah, the ending is the ending one is of a, the worst parts. It's a big old cop-out, and it's yeah. so unsatisfying. A lot of people love the ending, but it's one of those where, I don't I don't know, it was, if it was me, if it was you, if it was your Abby, we all felt the same way. But the ending happened, I'm like, oh, okay. It just, <laughs> it just kind of felt like bullshit, and... I think that has a lot to do with my next point is that the way that the plot was laid out was kind of lazy. Mm -hmm. And there was a lot of convenient moments or moments that didn't make sense where I thought, even for a horror movie, I thought, come on now. You got to think about how this logistically doesn't make sense Mm -hmm. or how this character would have gotten out of that scenario. Right. That was my one problem with the whole movie is it seemed like a pretty easy scenario to escape from. Mm Mm-hmm. Or at least uh, the way they laid it out, mm-hmm. and there was a lot of ways. The mo- there's a lot of times where I thought the movie would be over in ten minutes, 
mm-hmm. if if the character just did one or two things. Yeah, and there's there's like you said, there are a couple moments where it's like, oh, she's she's home free. She did this thing right, and then something happens where like she gets pulled back in, Ala, you know, Al Pacino and Godfather Part Three. Yeah, but like. It's ridiculous. You're like, oh, come on now. That wouldn't happen in real life. They would. Yeah. This would have happened. Like, the, come on. Uh, okay. I got a couple positives, though. Yeah? If there were, if there are some. Uh, there are some okay, you know, fight scenes, kind of horror scenes that were, that were pretty decent. Yeah. There's nothing really particularly wrong with it in that fashion. I just think the problem was the in-between time was not satisfactory. Mm-hmm. However, we got, sa- uh, we did get satisfactory performances out of... Really, most of the actors, but specifically Smur yeah. Weaving. She was great. And also, Melanie Scrifano. Yeah, she she was really good. Uh, what would you think of Adam Brody? Eh. I liked him. He was okay. I liked his character more well, than the performance, but he was good. Yeah. No, but Melanie Scrifano, man, she needs to get more, like, bigger things. She cracked me up, man. Yeah. Uh, she's, well, she's a, have you seen Letter Kenny? No, but I've She's seen hilarious parts on Letter Kenny. Parts of her in it. Yeah. This was a very different character than that one, but she uh for those of you playing at home, she kinda plays so she's part of the family that Samara Weaving's character is marrying you into, and she's sort of a, a sister, a, right? A, yeah, she's the sister of the the groom and she's kind of a, a ditzy cokehead. Mm-hmm. So that was pretty funny. But here's another thing about her and Adam Brody's character. Didn't you feel like the first act just glossed through everything way too fast? It took they me a second blew, to realize they, who everybody was for like a little bit. Yeah. I'm like, oh yeah, that's they right. She's blew, the sister. Yeah, they blew through everything. Mm-hmm. It was a little hard to kind of get your brains. Oh, okay, that's the sister. That's this. But I'll get to that a little bit more in spoilers. Um, I don't know. I think. Do you want to just move on to spoilers? Yeah, we can. I mean. Yeah, let's do spoiler. Spoiler time. Okay, yeah. <laughs> spoiler time. Yeah. yeah. That's that's a new thing. We say that. Anyway. Uh, the point I was saying about them glossing over things, like the wedding scene at the beginning, it's just like boom, boom, boom. Credits like, like are four, happening. Yeah, four shots. Right. Like, they go to the wedding, and that's like, you barely get a chance to really get to know the character. I mean, you get to know the characters as the movie goes on, but it would have been nicer to spend a little more time with them. That's, I don't know, that's just, that's kind of a nitpick. That was really not my main problem. That whole scene where they, the, the scene where they're leading up to the game and they're, they're explaining the game, did that bother you a little bit? Because the dad was like, now as you all know, proceeds to explain everything that everybody knows. And I'm like, why are you, just say... It- for the new person in the room, like you don't have to say just so we all. Know. And I know it's a small writing thing, but like that's such an easy writing thing to fix. It's it like did, it did feel like Peterman telling of his travels. Yeah, it's just like come on, man. Like yeah. this is an easy like expository thing you could just smooth over and make a little bit more professional. Okay, yeah, you know it's another thing about that. Hmm. So the whole deal about this ritual, right? The, once you figured out, they're kind of they they hint at you once. Okay, this is going to be a satanic ritual. Okay, got it. Like, as an audience member, I'm not a moron. I get it. Now let's move on or get a new development with this ritual. But they just keep saying it. The ritual. We've got to do the ritual. As if we're as if we're morons. Like, what ritual? What a mystery. Okay, we get it. It's the devil. You, you made a deal with the devil. Get on with it. But they just kept fixating on this ritual shit. It was just so boring. The second act is where this movie falls apart for me. I was so goddamn bored. There's like a, you know, a little fight scene, like slash horror, you know, scamper around the house scene here and there. Mm -hmm. But they're just, they're just sprinkled in with these bullshit long scenes about, but the ritual, let's keep talking about it, but not explicitly saying what it is. Even though the audience, if they're not brain dead, knows exactly what it is. You know, I did not. And that kind of speaks towards probably this movie also still isn't that good because so <laughs> so wait a minute the guy that they the the great great whatever the fuck that he was but there's the part he supposed to be the devil no but the guy where he's texting on his phone like is the blank like satanic ritual is it bullshit oh I oh okay there's yeah a, there's a couple little moments I thought he was just joking and then like because really 
Do you notice that like they they say like you said like I you no I'm not saying I it. no I'm not saying I like caught on to everything the way it was going to play out exactly but okay the th- what I'm saying is they beat us over the head with I get it there's a ritual we already knew that right let's move on to another development about this ritual see the Tell- satanic shit really caught me off guard at the end because like all of a sudden they're just like hail Satan and I'm like. What? Wait, what a kind of, what the hell other kind of ritual is there where it involves murder in horror movies? There's other deities than Satan that you sacrifice shit to. Nah, it's definitely Satan. <laughs> it's, it's always Satan. Yeah, but it, it was just weird because, like, that was the first time we heard of it. You know what I mean? It's like, I don't know. Like, it, it's... No, dude. Th- I mean, we th- see it on the phone. You see it on the phone, and, so it shouldn't be a surprise. Well, but I thought, like, the dude was joking, because, like, that dude was kind of a goof, you know, like... Yeah, but, I mean, what the hell else is this movie going to do? It's doing nothing. What I happens in the second act? She just <laughs> runs around the house. But I, I just, honestly, like, Even, it was oh, unclear. I love how it's like, oh, I can't scale a fence. Are you kidding me? Yeah, I gotta go through you, it. You've just, like, killed kill. three people? Yeah, I gotta break my ribs and go through this fence. Yeah. Or how about the OnStar thing with the car? That, that was, was that was what I was talking about. We're like, come now. This wouldn't happen in real life. All she had to do was say, all right, fine, you got me. I stole the car. Uh, come arrest me. Yeah. Like, that was just so dumb. Or how about this? Oh, God, I guess I can't get out of the fucking car and walk to mm-hmm. somewhere else. It's not like you're on a guy. It's not like this is Hans Island and fucking Enter the Dragon. Yeah, yeah. No yeah. guns. He's fearful of assassination. Like, you gotta, like this is. I'm sorry. Even if it's a horror movie, you can't just bullshit us like that. That's that's weak. That's weak sauce. Let's talk the ending. And the end. This movie starts to fall apart immediately when the husband, who is so fucking dead set on this woman, on Samara weaving and his future with her. And he just fucking heel face turns for no goddamn reason. She he, kills his mom. Yeah. So the fuck what? Your yeah, your mom that you threatened family. to yeah. murder five minutes ago, you dumb motherfucker. Or no, by you dumb motherfucker, I mean the writer. Yeah. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but still though, like, come on. And Abby, God love her, she called it in the fucking mo- theater. She's like, oh, they're going to kill his ass. The only reason they did that is to justify us not feeling bad for him. Yeah. I'm like, oh, fuck, here we go. And then they all start blowing up. And I'm like, oh, no. Okay, talk talk about an obvious fake out. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know that that's bullshit. Oh, nothing's happening. All right, here we go. They're all going to die. Yeah. Oh, here we go. And you know what's horse shit? I think people just like the idea that they they exploded more than oh that was unexpected that they exploded. It's not unexpected that it, the ritual was going to turn out to be real. Mm-hmm. That was not unexpected at all. Who cares? Also, wasn't she? And this is again, this is where the rules of the movie f- fucking kind of self implode on itself. Uh, isn't she a member of the family? Wouldn't she blow up too? Or did I don't they blow know. up first? Am I overthinking this because the rules of this movie don't make any goddamn sense? <laughs> yeah. A, well, I God mean, the, damn it. The, this movie is just full of like really bad writing choices. Another one I didn't like is Adrian Brody's character. Yeah, just go ahead, get out of here. See, a- Adrian Brody. Whatever the fuck his name is, <laughs> not Adam Brody. Adam Brody. Yeah, not okay. The OC Brody, not yeah, the, the Jack okay. King Kong Brody. So. <laughs> O.C. Chad McBroseth, <laughs> uh, he runs into Samara Weaving, mm-hmm. and then he's like, oh, I got you dead to rights, but uh, I like you or something, mm-hmm. I guess, so I'll let you go, mm. give you a 10-second head start. That just, uh, I, that, that's a case of, why don't you just shoot him if you're so dead set on, on like, if you're the bad guy, shoot this person. Mm-hmm. And it's like that. Like the old James Bond trope. I've got you right where I want, Mr. Bond. Now I'm going to leave the room. And yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like you know, the, they point that out in uh, Austin Powers. Mm-hmm. What, I'm just going to slowly dip him in with the mechanism and hope that things work out. What? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that's honestly... Th- going back to the ending thing, yeah, this is this movie just gets caught up and it stumbles and gets tangled up in its own rules and, and its house and its wives. there about four or five times where it's like they have her and then, oh yeah, I'm going to put her in the back seat and not tie her up. Cause and not, turn the music really loud, so... That's just bullshit. Like, Are these people all complete morons? Now, it sounds like I'm shitting all over this movie. Like, there are, again, like there are things about it that are fine. Like, the horror elements are... Fr- like, I was never... 
really bored. Like there are slow parts. I was bored parts. during the parts of the second act. There, I was bored during the parts of the second act that I'd seen in the trailer. Yeah, specifically, like, oh, here's the part where they shoot the maid. Here's the part where blah yeah, blah blah yeah. happens. But like, it's okay. Like, it's for me, it was watchable. All right, that's it. Yeah. All right, so let's move on to scores. Then, what do you got? It's a six. A six out of uh, out of ten. All right, I'm not going to deviate too much from you. I'm going to give this a 2.5 out of 5, just because even though it had a lot of problems, it was, I would say it's watchable. I so that's why I, I I have to give it at least the extra 0. 0.5. All right, that brings so, us yeah. to a grand total of 8.5 out of 15. That's that's not great. Yeah, if only the, this could have used a rewrite. So that'll do it for our review of The House Was Unlocked at One Point, You Dumbass.